This is Dorothy Cooper. Ms. Cooper is 96 years old. She was born in North Georgia on or about the year 1915. At the time Ms. Cooper was born, America did not allow women to vote. Women did not yet have that right. In 1919, when Dorothy Cooper was still a tiny tot, the U.S. Congress passed an amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which gave women the right to vote. But before the amendment could go into the Constitution and go into effect, the states, of course, had to have their say. They had to ratify it. Georgia, where Dorothy Cooper was growing up at the time, said no to letting women vote. Georgia lawmakers voted against ratifying that amendment. Men only voting for Georgia. Ultimately, though, enough other states agreed to the 19th Amendment that it became the law of the land in 1920. Georgia still didn't get around to extending that supposed federal right, right to women, that constitutional right, for another year until 1921. They didn't get around to ratifying the amendment until 50 years later, in 1970. But lucky for the women voters of Georgia, a federal right is a federal right, even if Georgia's men wanted to keep that vote all to themselves. When Dorothy Cooper grew up, she left Georgia, she moved to the city. She moved to Chattanooga, Tennessee to work and to start a family. Tennessee, as it happens, was the state that pushed the 19th Amendment over the edge to let women vote, the state that gave the final yes vote needed for ratification. And Dorothy Cooper, as a new Tennessee resident, enthusiastically exercised her right, her right to vote. Starting in the 1930s, she voted in pretty much every election she could. She voted in the race between FDR and Alf Landon. Remember Alf Landon? Me neither. Don't sweat it. She voted in the race between Dwight Eisenhower and Adlai Stevenson. She voted without any trouble, she says, even in the very southern state of Tennessee, before Congress passed the Voting Rights Act to protect African Americans' access to the polls. In 1960, Dorothy Cooper did break her string of perfect attendance at the polls. She missed voting that year in the Kennedy-Nixon race, the only time Ms. Cooper ever played hooky from an election. She, said, she says she had just moved just before Election Day, and she did not have time to update her registration. So other than that sort of quotidian glitch in 1960, though, Dorothy Cooper, from the 1930s until today, Dorothy Cooper voted. She voted every single time. She voted in 2010 when Republicans gained control of both chambers of Tennessee's state legislature and the governorship for the first time since Reconstruction. The newspapers promised, quote, far-reaching ramifications from the Republican takeover in Tennessee. One of those far-reaching ramifications was that for the very first time in her very long life in Tennessee, Dorothy Cooper is now finding it very hard to vote. This year, the new Republican Tennessee legislature passed a law requiring people to show ID they never had to show before in order to cast a ballot. During the debate, Democrats tried to insert an amendment exempting senior citizens from the new rule, but Republicans rejected it. The bill passed. On June 1st, the new Tennessee Republican governor, Bill Haslam, signed it into law. And now, for the first time in Tennessee, in order to vote, you have to show an ID that 500,000 Tennesseans do not have, including Dorothy Cooper. Ms. Cooper, whose story appears this week in the Chattanooga Times Free Press. Ms. Cooper found out last month that she'd need a photo ID to vote. She's never been a driver, so she does not have a license to show at the polls. But she does have documents. She has all the accumulated documents of a normal life lived normally when you're 96. She went down to the local driver service center, the DMV, with a ton of documentation. She brought her lease, a rent receipt, her voter registration card, her birth certificate. Naturally, that 96-year-old birth certificate carries the name she was born with, Dorothy Alexander, instead of her married name, Dorothy Cooper. She says, quote, I didn't have my marriage certificate. I don't know what difference it makes. Well, that day at the DMV in Tennessee, it made all the difference in the world because the clerk looked at all of those documents she brought and said no. No, Dorothy Cooper, age 96, voting in Tennessee since the 1930s. No, we will not give you the ID that you need now, all of a sudden, in Tennessee in order to vote. Even during Jim Crow days, you didn't have any problems voting in Tennessee? No, I haven't had any problems at all until this time. This is the only time that I've had any problems. Do you feel that this is something that you never thought at this stage in your voting life that you would have to face? Are you surprised that they would change and make these kind of strict requirements at this stage of the game? No, I never, I never thought that it would be like this, ever. Dorothy Cooper says she never expected this, but at least she does have company in her predicament. Half a million of her fellow Tennesseans have not got the right ID either. And only a third of Tennessee's counties have a DMV office for you to haul all your documents to for the clerk there to decide whether or not you meet the requirements. 
the Republican state senator who sponsored the new law, Bill Ketron, called the new law necessary to, quote, protect the purity of the ballot box, casting out the manifest impurity, I guess, that is Dorothy Cooper. That's what it looks like in Tennessee right now, where Republicans have succeeded in making it harder to vote for Dorothy Cooper and for a lot of other people. As we have been talking about on this show all year, this is not just about Tennessee. Republicans are doing this all across the country with state law. Republicans in Kansas passed a law this year that requires you to prove your citizenship when you register to vote. So think about it. You're at the supermarket. The nice lady from the League of Women Voters is there at the card table out front. Are you registered to vote, sir? Would you like to register, sir? Yes, you would like to register. Great idea. Okay, do you have your passport on you there at the grocery store? How about your birth certificate there at the grocery store with you? If not, sorry. Not in Kansas. Not anymore. In swing states like Florida and Ohio, Republicans have cut the time for early voting or absentee voting or both. In Colorado, the Republican Secretary of State ordered Pueblo County, a very Democratic county, not to mail ballots to troops overseas who had not voted since the big election in 2010 or re-upped their registration. The state considers them inactive voters. Maybe they're a little busy fighting a war or whatever, but no ballots for them. We have to protect the purity of the ballot box from the troops trying to protect us. Tonight, we can report that Pueblo County has sent those ballots out to the troops after the intervention today of a court ruling today against the Secretary of State in a related case. Pueblo County's clerk, Gilbert Ortiz, you see here, told us tonight that sending those ballots to the troops is the right thing to do, even if the Republican Secretary of State initially tried to stop him from doing it. Mr. Ortiz telling us tonight that even with the legal issues not all settled, he has gone ahead and sent out the ballots to the troops. That's the way voting is being challenged and defended now, mostly at the state and the local level. This is not being seen as a national story yet, but voting is a federal right. Last week, President Obama said access to the polling place matters to him and his administration and that he would like to do something about it. I will say that my big priority is making sure that as many people are participating in our democracy as possible. Uh, some of these moves in some of the other states that we've seen, trying to make uh, it tougher to vote, restricting ballot access, uh, making it hard on seniors, uh, making it hard on young people, I think that's a big mistake. And uh, I have uh, made sure that our Justice Department's taken a look uh, at what's being done across the country uh, so to ensure that people aren't being denied uh, access to the franchise. President Obama, in an interview with Michael Smirconish, saying the Justice Department will look into the many changes in state law that are making it harder for Americans to vote this year. This is not one where you can troubleshoot for particular problems. It's not a one-off matter of what's happening in Florida or Ohio or Maine or Kansas or Colorado or Tennessee. It's not just Dorothy Cooper. This map from the Brennan Center for Justice shows the states that tried to pass new requirements that you show ID you never had to show before in order to vote. These are the states that tried, Republican states. Enough of them succeeded in making it harder to vote that the new laws could affect millions of people next year, people who are disproportionately young and or poor and or minority. In other words, people who are traditionally part of the Democratic base. And this is important. It's not coincidental, and it is perhaps more to the point to note that there are enough states now that have passed new laws to make voting harder to swing the Electoral College to decide who gets to be president in the 2012 election. The, the, the laws thin out and preclude likely Democratic voters in more than half of the states you need to win the presidency. Is that who Republicans are trying to protect the purity of the ballot box from, from Democrats, from likely Democratic voters? Is that the goal? Because that is going to be the effect.